Hi, welcome everyone. This is Michael Forrester here to talk today about the new data engineering associates exam. Yes, you heard me say it. AWS has a brand new associates exam that they are releasing in April of next year. It's a data engineering associates exam. So it's going to sit at that developer system operations, solutions, architecture level of associates exams, right? Let's get into it because I know you want to know the details. By the way, you can do the beta here soon. It's going to be available in April. So let's get to it. Okay. So first things first, you're probably familiar with AWS certification. If you're not, it's probably worth exploring. It's one of the more valuable certifications in the industry. And just know that right now it's not listed in our browser certification pass. So they've got a data analytics speciality that is not the data engineering associates. This is a beta exam. So you have to search for it. So you have to search for certified data engineer associates in order to get into this beta exam. So this is not yet out. This is only for beta. So again, this is an associates level exam, 170 minutes, not unlike the other associates level exams. This one's a little different because it's 85 questions, either multiple choice or multiple response. And notice that it's $75. So it's going to be half price for the beta. It'll go back to full price once April of 2024 is here, right? So note that it's going to validate core data related AWS services, including data pipelines, monitoring and troubleshooting issues. And if you're interested in using the technology to transform data for analysis and actual insights, it's going to allow you to be one of the first to earn this new data engineer associates badge. How do you prepare for the exam? Where do we always go? Step one is to get a map. And that map is usually the exam guide. So let's take a look at the exam guide and see what's possible. This is DEA data engineering associates dash C01. This is the exam guide brand new, just for the data certified data engineer. So this is O one. So it's the first one. I know sometimes they start with zero. It's O one. Now notice that they expect you to have the ability to ingest and transform data, choose an optimal data store operationalize, maintain and monitor data pipelines. And then of course, make sure there's appropriate kind of controls, governance, et cetera, including logging, right? They expect the candidate to have two to three years of experience and one to two years of experience with AWS, two to three years with data, one to two years hands on with AWS. So this is not for people who haven't touched AWS. At least that's what they say. I bet you if we do enough projects, we can get hands on enough to make it work. Right? General knowledge, you're going to know Git, you're going to know what data lakes are. You have to know the application of programming concepts, not necessarily the programming concepts, or syntax, how to do ETL, which is ext extract, transform and load general concepts for networking and storage, right? And you should ideally basically know how to use what AWS services to accomplish the tasks listed that we're about to look at understanding of encryption, governance, protection and logging as it relates to AWS and the ability to compare different AWS services for general understanding of costs. AWS is not going to ask you the specific nickel and dime cost of things. So don't get wrapped up in that. How to structure all SQL queries, how to analyze, verify, and ensure data consistency by using AWS services. <coughs> Here's a few things that are out of scope. They're not going to ask you to do any AI ML tasks. They're not going to ask you to generate any programming specific syntax. And they're not going to ask you to draw business conclusions based on data. Really simple. Same type of questions, multiple choice, one correct response and three incorrect responses, or two or more correct responses out of a set of five. That's the same. This is going to be a 50 questions exam. And then it says 15 unscored questions that do not affect your score. I feel like that might be a mistake in the guide itself, because if we go back and look, didn't it say it was 85 questions on the page, but the exam guide does tend to be the dominant there. So let's go take a look. So it did say 85 questions, right? Not really an associate's exam. Maybe that was a mistake. I'll ask the AI program. Bottom line is that I'm assuming it's 65 questions because all of the other associates exams are 65 questions and the exam guide is typically gone over fairly rigorously. I think that 85 was a mistake. So let's assume it's 65 questions. 50 scored, 15 un unscored, but just to be clear, it's not going to make a difference to you because you're not going to know which of those 15 questions are unscored. Let's keep going. Passing score, minimum passing score is a 720. This is important to note. 
is that you want to shoot for 800s and 900s because if a lot of people are passing this exam, the difficulty level actually goes up a little bit. That's why a 720 is minimum. They look at how you perform on the exam as a whole. They do a lot of complex algorithms to weight what it is you pass. So they have scaled scoring models. So shoot for 800s and 900s. As we move forward, here's where we get into the meat of this little dish here, is that we've got four domains, data ingestion transformation, which is 34% of the scored content, data store management, which is 26% of the scored content. Then we've got data operations and support, which is 22%, and then we've got data security and governance, which is 18%. Here are the task statements. Do you understand the different throughput and latency characteristics for the various AWS services that can ingest data? Do you understand the difference between batch and streaming? Do you understand data ingestion patterns and where one service might be better than another? These are the kind of things they're gonna want you to know. For example, look at all these services listed, DMS, Glue, Redshift, DynamoDB Streams, Managed Streaming for Kafka, Batch Sourcing, EMR, DMS, Redshift, Lambda, AppFlow, Glue. And so you wanna read this in detail. It's got things like how to set up schedulers, and notice it says Apache Airflow there, not just AWS events, but managed Apache Airflow on AWS. <clears throat> how do you deal with Kinesis? How do you create a loud list for IP addresses? How does that work? What about throttling and weight rate limiting? How do you do that? How do you do fan out and, I'm uh, sorry, fan out and fan in patterns for streaming data distribution? That's important to know. So there's a bunch of task statements here. Look at this, Apache Sparks right in the middle of that. Where would that possibly be? Possibilities. Understanding a little about JDBC and ODBC, for example, connecting to different data sources, transforming data. Do you understand the difference between ORC and Parquet and CSV and TSV and what the optimizations are? Which ones are optimized for which kind of data explorations? Orchestrating various data pipelines, including serverless workflows and event-driven architecture. This seems pretty standard, actually. Applying programming concepts, including SQL queries, distributed computing, optimizations. Definitely has a little bit more teeth on the technical side than you usually see talked about inside an AWS exam. How to do beta pipelines, how do you do get commands to perform specific actions? How do you mount storage volumes from within Lambda functions? Pretty good. And then data store management. So that was all task domain one, by the way, which is 34% of the exam. Now we're on data store management, which if I remember correctly, is 26% of the exam. What's the right data store for your use case? Important to know. How to understand data cataloging systems, including what is a data catalog to begin with? What is a metadata catalog? Managing the life cycle of data and probably includes with the data catalog, data classifications, and then designing data models and the evolution of particular schemas or the, the way data is structured, right? Including unstructured, semi-structured and, and tightly structured data. For example, here's a SageMaker ML lineage tracking I don't, even, I don't even know what that is, actually. I work in this industry every day, and I don't know currently what SageMaker ML is tracking. I'm gonna have to go take a look at that right off the bat. DMS schema conversion tool, I know what that is, and the DMS schema conversion. And then we move past all the pieces related to domain two, right? Which is all about understanding what the data stores, data store management. And now we're on to three, which is all about data operations and support. So this is about how do you make calls? How do you troubleshoot? Is there any patching involved? Thankfully, no. How do you orchestrate these data pipelines that deliver data from one place to the next in, in the right format? A lot of ETL involved. And then analyze the data used by AWS services, how to visualize the data, make it consumable by people who are not necessarily engineers or technical, maintaining and monitoring data pipelines, ensuring data quality. Like what techniques would you use to make sure that data is good? Or if there's gaps in the data, how would you correct the data? And then last but not least, which is gonna be about 18% of the exam is data security and governance. What are the authentication mechanisms that you can apply here, uh, including all of the various firewalls that could be at play? What are the various authorization mechanisms, right? So not just authentication, but authorization as well. What about data encryption and masking potentially tokenizing data. And then what about preparing logs for an audit and understanding data privacy and governance? And that is it. That's a lot. So the URL for the exam guide is here. 
in this video. Take a look at this, like really go through because there currently isn't a ramp up guide for this, but there are a ton of classes available to study for this kind of thing. Also note that in the appendix, you're gonna to have to know which each of these services are as far as the in scope services and feature. So you need to know what they do and if they're related to data, which I would argue this entire analytics section is, you're gonna to need to be able to know how to, how to use it. So everything listed here, 100% gonna be on the exam. This is probably gonna be pretty light. This is the financial management pieces. Lambda and the SAM is gonna be strong. EC2 is gonna be relatively light. Batch is probably gonna be strong since that is literally used for processing. Containers is probably gonna be light. Databases is gonna be light in detail, but in use cases, it's gonna be really strong. Developer tools is gonna to be relatively light. API gateway is gonna be light. SageMaker is probably gonna be relatively strong. And I would argue that migration and transfer is gonna be strong as well because it's used quite a bit. We have tools here for security, identity, and compliance, and of course, different types of storage, particularly the ones that you would hook up with Lambda, which is one of the task statements earlier. Notice they're not including a bunch of obscure business applications or analytics or specifics like Red Hat, or they're not including the time stream database. So make sure you look through this and understand exactly what you're scoping in on. But those task statements that were at the beginning of this document are gonna be your friend and they're gonna be amazing for you to study. The other thing to note is that they do actually have practice exams, a practice exam set already apparently ready to go. And you do have to enroll in it and it's on AWS's skill builder platform. So you might have to pay for it, but I believe the questions are free. And just to give you an example, we're gonna just look at these for just a moment. So this is just the overview and the instructions, right? Now we're gonna take a look at the questions. All right, we're gonna hit start here. Let's get it. So once you click on that start button, it's actually gonna take you to a, a branded um, a bench prep page. And you can see more here as far as what you can do. Hit start and then hit start again in the lower right hand side. And then it's gonna ask you a question. For example, data engineers design an application that will add data for transformation to an SQS queue. The microservice will receive messages from the queue. The data engineer wants to ensure message persistence which events can remove messages from an SQS queue, right? In one, the queue is purged, because they're asking you what can remove messages. The queue is purged, that would be a problem. A delete message API call, right? And let's see. The max receive count has been reached for a message. Let's see what it says. Yep, those are all three are right. So correct answer is A, B, and C. A, B, and C, right? So this is kind of knowledge that you need. This is just SQS. This isn't necessarily even something specific to data analytics. Let's take a look at the next question. I'll make sure I get a few wrong. Data engineers designing an application that will transform data in containers managed by EKS. The containers run on EC2 nodes. Each container application will transform independent data sets and store the data in data lake. Data does not need to be shared to other containers. The data engineer needs to decide where to store data before transformation is complete. What solutions will meet these requirements with the lowest latency? Hmm. Data does not be shared to other containers. Each containerized will transform and then store the data. So containers should use application code. So we've got an ephemeral volume provided by the nodes RAM. Okay. What should be the fastest? Persistence volume. This is a good one. DAX is really fast. Do we care about cost? Uh, I don't think it makes writes like single digit fast. It makes reads fast. Huh. That's a good question, actually. Fastest would probably be an ephemeral volume on Windows RAM. Let's see what it says. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because if you're not leaving the system, that's going to be fastest. Okay. Cool. Last one. Companies collecting data that's generated by its users for analysis using an S3 data lake. Some of the data being collected and stored in S3 includes PII. The company wants a data engineer to design an automated solution to identify new and existing data that needs PII to be masked before the analysis is confirmed. Additionally, the data engineer must provide an overview of the data that's identified. The task of masking the data will be handled by an application that was already created in the AWS account. So, the data engineer just needs to design a solution that can evoke this application in real time when PI is found. 
Okay, good. So if we want to search for PII, I would say that Macy's probably generally going to be your friend, right? And since the question says, which solution will meet these requirements with the least operational overhead, we're looking at trying to use an AWS service instead of trying to leverage our own capabilities, right? So in this particular case, I would say we want to look at Macy. And I noticed that two of the answers have Macy in there because Macy is the scanning engine that detects PII, right? Now, Macy probably will emit its findings to event bridge. And so we could actually just create an event bridge rule for the default event bus for Macy findings and then set the masking application as a target saying, hey, we found PII here, please go after it. So I'm gonna see, guess that it's D. And it looks like this is green, so the answer is indeed D. And so that gives you an idea of what you could do to study for the exam. Additionally, by the way, any of your data engineering workshops and classes are gonna be useful, but if you have any questions about where to go next as far as to study data engineering, We'll post up another video about a couple of ideas of how to study for this upcoming exam. So thanks for watching. My name is Michael Forrester. Hit that subscribe, hit that like button. Hope we catch you next time.